The history of colonialism may present an idea that the power dynamic between Europe and Africa was always grossly unbalanced in favor of Europe. However, upon close analysis, we see that early interactions between Europeans and West Africans was more of an equal exchange. In a sense, home court advantage was a thing for quite some time, and in order for Europeans to survive the initial encounter, they had to respect the power of various African states. What up African world, it's home team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. Also, stay tuned with a word from my sponsors. Hello, my name is Howard Dorsey. I'm 54 years old. I'm here to talk about my uh, experience with herbal results. Um, I was getting sick, so I, I went to the doctor and they told me that um, my blood pressure was high, my cholesterol was borderline or high, so I was very sick. You know, I thought I was, sometimes I thought I was dying at, at some point. And uh, I ordered a bottle of olive leaf extract. This is, this is how the bottle comes in. And within the first probably week and a half, two weeks, I checked my blood pressure and it was back down to normal. It was like 120 over 80. And my cholesterol went down to uh, 125. You know, I definitely believe that olive leaf extract from Herbal Results saved my life. And I, that's real. I mean, I, 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 and I recommend it to everyone in my family, my friends, and we've seen a lot of results in that, in that manner as well. Purchase now at herbalresults.net Some of us in the diaspora may still possess old tropes regarding the initial encounter between Europeans and Africans. Popular narratives certainly played a significant role in how we perceive this history. The idea that Africans were completely powerless when Europeans first arrived, in short, is a total misrepresentation of history. The first European group to encounter West Africa came in quite aggressively, but learned very quickly that there was a substantial cost to that approach. Our focus in this video will be the first encounter between West Africans and the Portuguese in the 15th century. Keep in mind that this video only applies to West Africa and to one European people group, the Portuguese. Ironically, the Portuguese upon their arrival in West Africa were not at all shocked by the inhabitants. They were very much aware of Africans below the Sahara via the countless conscripted soldiers they encountered during the centuries-long Moorish occupation of the Iberian Peninsula. And at the very least, if Portuguese mariners or soldiers during the 15th century had never personally seen an African originating below the Sahara, they were undoubtedly aware of this history. So why were the Portuguese the first to visit West Africa and not Britain or France, for example? Aside from proximity, the Portuguese were granted first dibs by the papal bull because they were seen as less likely to supply weapons to non-Christians. This was obviously a big concern back then. Christian Europe did not want to compete with any other non-Christians, especially Muslims. Romanus Pontifex, the papal bull that awarded suzerainty over the African waters to Portugal, did so on the grounds that the Portuguese, unlike other unnamed Europeans, could be trusted not to supply weapons, raw materials, and military technology to the infidels. Some Portuguese narratives during this early encounter express European supremacy and claim that the Portuguese came into Africa waving their sticks, making threats, and demanding African rulers comply with any and all whimsical Portuguese prerogatives. However, careful examination of the evidence paints another picture. It appears that the guiding principle in most types of negotiations was pragmatism, that the Portuguese were in a very vulnerable position, and that they did not enjoy any special advantages. This statement may sound unfamiliar to us as we've been bombarded with claims of European military superiority for quite some time. Context eludes us as this superiority wasn't made abundantly clear until about the 18th or 19th century. For example, West Africa was still relatively in their prime during the 15th century, and thus, West African military strength 
literally altered the trajectory of aggressive Portuguese policy. The Portuguese went from hostile attack and capture to pursuing friendly terms. The African show of military prowess quickly resulted in significant casualties among the Portuguese and gained the black Africans the respect in Portuguese eyes that the apparently helpless Sanhaja fishermen of coastal Mauritania could not command. Loss of life and diminishing returns persuaded the Portuguese to seek peaceful relations and trade rather than combat and military glory. The Portuguese were well aware of the precariousness of their situation, their technology, fortifications, weaponry, and sailing ships armed with artillery was of little advantage in African conditions. In confined coastal waters and on rivers, the sailing ships were vulnerable to concentrated attacks by large war canoes and often fell prey to determined African parties. Metal armor was a torment in a tropical climate. The late 15th and early 16th century firearms were often too clumsy to have more than a psychological effect against small or moving targets. While the Portuguese certainly could look after themselves militarily, African weaponry and tactics were still highly effective against them, and poisoned arrows usually caused horrible damage. Early Portuguese conduct understandably made Africans very hostile to their presence, and Portugal essentially had to rebrand its bad reputation. It wasn't until the 1450s that a peaceful trade-like relationship became more consistent. Local African rulers ensured protection as the Portuguese crown's ability to do so in West Africa was very limited. The presence of Portuguese forts or trading centers along the coast originated not from Portuguese military success, but from African parentage. However, the African rulers were not blinded to the fact of a potential Portuguese economic monopoly. The crown would secure land leased from the African authorities to found fortified trading stations at key commercial points, ostensibly to enhance its commercial opportunities and the security of its trading operations. As it concerns a Portuguese economic monopoly, the African rulers were not blind to this aspect of the Portuguese crown's agenda. Despite other attempts, only three such outposts on African-held territory were successfully established. Of these three, only Mina achieved permanence. Africans also displayed power diversity. They did not always use force to instruct Portuguese policy. Boycotting or disrupting trade was just as effective. Africans took full advantage of alternative markets when necessary. With a combination of equal military relevance and economic prowess, Africans achieved the power necessary to check any reckless European ambition. Assuring the goodwill of the African political elite was of key importance to the Portuguese. Portuguese interest in West Africa began to wane as they found more economic opportunities. Both groups accepted and rejected each other at various times throughout the relationship, which clearly points to a power dynamic that was far more equal than we give credit. Unfortunately, we rarely, if ever, hear the historical perspective outside of medieval Portuguese propaganda. Hopefully, this history gives a fuller scope as it relates to West Africa's first encounter with Europe. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.